expectancy. If you do that, you're going to find that you lower their homocysteine levels in the blood. That's a metabolite that is associated with heart disease. So giving B vitamins for one purpose has a side benefit is it lowers heart disease. So I can tell my patients, if they ask me, and I often tell, I say to them, why don't you ask me how dangerous this is? They say, okay, how dangerous is it? And I'll say, well, you're going to live longer. Is that going to be a problem for you? Most people don't find that a problem. I think cure uh, in terms of any illness is not really the right term. I think the propensity will always be there. But when we treat appropriately, when we restore the balance, then, then you have a healing. But cure means that the propensity may be gone, and I don't think so. If we have a propensity, it'll stay there. And that it would be a false, um, it would be an illusion to tell people, you're cured, that's it. Because in fact, they do have to maintain a certain diet and certain supplements in order to maintain that balance. I was interviewed uh, once or twice uh, uh, for a television program or for a newspaper and I remember one time watching myself on the tube they had spliced out the part where I talked about vitamins. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh really? I went to three different doctors. Right. Can you give me a referral to see Dr. Havre? Oh you don't want to go see him. You can join my my group therapy session or you can no that guy's a quack or all those vitamins uh, that's just a, a bunch of crap and you don't want to believe that many of my colleagues have been at great risk and many have lost their licenses for practicing what I think is absolutely appropriate medicine and far more appropriate than uh, what's called conventional medicine uh, so uh, anyway I got this registered letter that said uh, within 10 days they no longer wanted me to prescribe vitamins minerals or make dietary adjustments in my hospitalized patients and uh, I called around like uh, Carl Pfeiffer uh, and uh, several others I had I think 11 people lined up to come in and testify on my behalf if something was going to happen at the hospital and then I called an attorney whose daughter had uh, he's a very prominent attorney in Kansas whose daughter had had an acute schizophrenic break and did very well uh, and to this day is doing very well. Uh, anyway, I called him and asked if he would help, and he said, oh, sure. Uh, I think his direct quote was, I, I've always wanted to sue those bastards. And uh, he wrote a letter, the punchline of which uh, was, uh, the last paragraph was, that if the committee wanted to go to court and to maintain the standard of care in Wichita, Kansas, was to shock, sedate, and sedate, we would be happy to do so. And restrain, I think, was the shock, sedate, and restrain, I think, was the refrain. And then suddenly, within uh, uh, a week or so, it was fine for me to prescribe vitamins, minerals, and make dietary adjustments. One doctor at an interview I gave the other day, a lecture I gave, had a question from the audience afterwards. He said, what if a patient comes to me and wants to try a nutritional therapy, and my, I don't know much about it, except that it doesn't work, and I just want to know what advice I should give them. And I said, more important than the advice you give the patient is to listen to yourself. You're asking a question, I don't know much about it, except that it doesn't work. Well, if you don't know about it, how is it you have an opinion on it? Doctors are inherently um, very conservative. They're also um, very reluctant to overstep the bounds of what their teachers in medical school want them to believe. Uh, and there is a climate of fear and um, um, brainwashing that does occur. Uh, Fortunately, that's all breaking down, and um, slowly and steadily the tide is turning in the direction, and slowly and steadily they are finding themselves dragged, kicking and screaming and whining and sniveling into um, um, making concessions to orthomolecular ideas here and there. And the pharmaceutical companies control medicine, not in the sense that there's a plot. I don't think there's a plot. In the sense that they are selling a product, they're going to advertise their product. So the average doctor reads only about drugs. That's all they're taught. 